You know, sometimes we talk about bugs and pests that get into our homes or businesses at certain times of the year. Some of them are minor nuisances, others are real health concerns. But there's a type of bug that can actually bring down your property value and even destroy a structure. As I mentioned that, you might be thinking termites, and you'd be right. What do we know about them? Today, we'll receive an education from Jennifer Gordon, our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. Jennifer, welcome again to the program. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So termites, um, you know, I, I think of a termite as a bug that eats wood. There must be more to it though, right? You're absolutely right, Jeff. Uh, termites only eat wood and sometimes other cellulose containing items such as paper products and mulch. And this can definitely make them very destructive to building components made out of these types of materials. But before we get into how damaging these pests can be, I do wanna talk a little bit about how interesting these critters are. So similar to the ants we talked about a few months ago, termites are social insects. So they live in these large cooperative groups that focus on the success of the whole. And recent research on the topic actually discovered that termites are really just social cockroaches, which is really cool to me as an entomologist because termites used to be considered a unique group of insects. So putting them into the same group as cockroaches was really big. And another really cool thing about termites is that they're one of the oldest insects we know of. People have found fossilized termite remains in termite formations that are over 100 million years old. You know, Jennifer, it's interesting when you can say the word interesting with termites and cockroaches. So that's, that's cool. I have to confess something here. Uh, I was in South America once and on a tour, and one of the highlights of the day was eating termites. Did you enjoy them? So I don't know if I did or not. It was, they're very small <laughs> and I can't say I didn't like them. They tasted like mint because they pulled them from a mint, a mint tree of some kind. So it, it took on the flavor of what it was eating, which makes sense. But I forgot about that too. You got talking about termites and eating wood and stuff. So anyway, that's a side point, but very, very cool information. Let's talk about how they get in. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And it really depends on the kind of termite we're talking about and where you are in the country because there are different kinds of termites depending on where you are. So broadly speaking, there are three groups of termites, subterranean, dry wood, and damp wood. So the first ones I mentioned are subterranean termites. And these are termites that live underground and they generally get into buildings from the ground up. So wood that is in direct contact with the ground could create an excellent entryway. However, these termites can build mud tubes up until they reach a suitable entry point. And subterranean termites can be found across most parts of the United States, but are rarer in colder states. Um, on the other hand, you have drywood termites, which can enter a building really anywhere that swarming adults can access a crack or crevice. And a termite swarm occurs when winged adults leave an area trying to find a new location to live. And these drywood termites are going to be found in the southern and southwestern states where temperatures are relatively warm all year round. And then finally, there are damp wood termites. And these are termites that live in very damp and decaying wood. And a damp wood termite infestation can start when just a pair of swarming adults find a suitable damp and decaying wood source. And these types of termites, you know, again, you're generally gonna find them in the Pacific coast, Southwest deserts in Florida. We have to think about, you mentioned how they get in and, and that's a concern, but do they create nests? Do, how, how extent can the infestation be? Yeah, so these colonies can vary in size, but they can get really big depending on the species and how long they've been left alone without treatment. So starting out, a colony may only have a few individuals, but as the infestation grows, their colonies can contain thousands to millions of termites. So because of how big these colonies can get, it's really important to keep a watchful eye out for signs that you may have an infestation. Okay, so you mentioned they eat wood. And cellulose, I imagine, would be the broad term for that. What else do they need to survive? Sure. So like we just discussed, you know, termites only eat wood and cellulose containing items. However, these insects can be pretty susceptible to drying out and temperature changes. So moisture and warmth are required for their survival. And because of these requirements, it's going to be really important to prevent moisture accumulation um, around a building whenever you can. Yeah. I know right now we've got snow here, so maybe no termites are swarming, which is good. 
All right. They're in your house. They're in your building. I suppose an inspection might show that, or you might even see the signs. How do you get rid of them? Yeah. You know, that really is always the $1 million question, isn't it? So it's like I say a lot with you, Jeff, um, the best way to stop an infestation is to prevent one from ever occurring. So just like you said, annual inspections by a pest management professional will go a long way to detecting an infestation and protecting your building. And if termites are found, this is definitely a pest that generally requires a professional. And the type of treatment that is best will depend on a lot of factors such as the species, location of the infestation, and the extent of the infestation. And some examples of types of treatments may include removing and replacing the infested area, spot treatments, and more complicated treatments such as treating the soil around the structure with pesticides and even fumigation. However, even though getting rid of these pests should be left to a professional, there's a lot that folks in the cleaning industry can do to help protect the health of a building from termites. So first and foremost, you wanna keep an eye out for telltale signs of an infestation, such as piles of wood debris created when termites are excavating tunnels in the wood, uh, wood that's been weakened by termite feeding, or even mud tubes on walls. Another sign to keep an eye out for are shed termite wings. So after termites swarm, they shed their wings once they found a new place to live. So you may not see the actual termites, but coming across a lot of wings in an area when you're cleaning could be a sign of a problem. And then finally, you might come across the termites themselves. You might see a swarm or even dead termites that got caught in spider or cobwebs. And if you see any of these signs, you should take a picture and report them to the appropriate person for your building. In my experience, cleaning staff often see signs of a potential problem long before others, so it is always a best practice to listen to what they have to say. Okay, Jennifer, the million dollar question, especially thinking about um, the industry where we take care of buildings and homes, what does that mean for public health? Are any of these um, termites especially harmful? So the good news is, is that termites themselves are not going to hurt people directly. You know, if you mess with them, they might try to defend themselves, but they aren't really going to hurt someone. They don't transmit any known diseases. And there might, there are some studies that might suggest people react to the allergens produced by termites. However, the damage they can do to a building can be so extensive that it ultimately results in the building collapsing or needing to be demolished. And obviously, if someone loses their home or business due to termite damage, that can definitely impact somebody's mental health. And additionally, the economic impact of their damage can be harmful too. So even though termites may not seem to have a direct impact on public health, the damage they cause can have a huge impact on people. So for these reasons and more, if you find any symptoms of termites in your building or suspect you may have them, calling a professional immediately will hopefully be able to save you a lot of heartache in the future. All right, good information, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Now we know a little more about termites. No problem.